What do you think is the worst mistake you can make when modeling a domain? I was asked this question by a member of my channel on our private Discord. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, and before I give you my answer, I decided to toss this question out to the community, and I got a lot of interesting replies. Here are a few that I'm gonna elaborate on and provide some more insights on some of the worst mistakes you can make when modeling a domain. I got quite a few replies, and a few of them have a theme that I wanna show. So, it is, Yordis wrote, Talk so much about entities, value objects, and aggregates instead of workflows, data, and organizational structure. Then Simon kind of tacks on to this a little bit. The theme is not talking to all the people involved in the use of the system. We get too tied up in the tech sometimes, kind of talking about those tactical patterns that we think about in domain-driven design. As a wise colleague would often rightly remind me, it's a people problem. Dan added on, focusing too much on data at rest versus process and events, just like yours was saying, but also not having concrete use cases in mind. An anemic domain, Corey added on to that. What Dan said, use cases are the problem. Focusing, uh, focus on solving problems with the support of a domain model. Lastly, kind of in this thread, Damien wrote, forgetting about the importance of the spoken language, COPS that's existing in the Endeavor area and focusing on tactical building blocks, which turns out that we have a hammer and everything is a nail, which boils down to not understanding the problem we are facing, its nature. Before I elaborate on what I think is a common thread of these replies, I wanna thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So to elaborate on this, I think that really the thread of this is that the problem you can get into is as developers, we love technology, we love tools, etc., And that's what we put at the forefront instead of the actual problem space and what we're actually trying to solve. Then we kind of like that hammer nail, we have this hammer that's technology and we're trying to apply it everywhere. I think you can see this most when people latch on or start beginning to look at domain-driven design. You can find a million different tutorials and reviews that talk about domain-driven design in the sense of the tactical patterns, like Yordis was mentioning. There's so much talk about value objects, entities, um, aggregates, these types of things, services. These are all types of things that people latch onto right away because they're technical things that you can apply in code. However, they're a means to an end, they're a way to write your code, they aren't necessarily what you need to be doing in a given context. And that's really the thread here, is putting at the forefront, focusing on what are the use cases? What's actually the problem? Do we actually understand the problem so that we can decide what technology, what types of tools, what types of patterns we should use? Another great reply I got was from Roger that really points out a common mistake when modeling. When you fail to see that you're actually dealing with multiple domains, albeit similar, when I worked with a Swedish transportation agency and dealt with driver's licenses, there were really plenty of domains that overlapped. Driver's licenses in the context of law, in the context of issuing and renewing, in the context of private cars versus driving taxis, etc. Different islands with similar language, but things mean somewhat different things in each. Very easy to get lost in all of this and try to make one big unified model for everything. I think this happens because there's a lack of perspective. As Roger mentioned, within a given context, the perspective of that matters, the context matters, language matters. How people talk about something in their perspective, in their context is very different than somebody else. When you're talking about people's responsibilities, duties, and workflows, they care about different things. You may be talking about the same thing or using the same words, but they mean very different things. And if you watched my videos before, you knew I was gonna post this, but if you're new, it's from Mel Conway. It's when a politician greets you with how are you and a nurse greets you with how are you. They're totally different questions, even though they sound and are spelled the same. Context matters, perspective. Perspective really matters. If you have a singular perspective, you're gonna do what Roger just said, is you're gonna have one massive model that's likely probably not gonna really solve many problems because really, if you took their perspective, from different contexts, you'd probably have multiple different models that are trying to solve different problems. I like this one from Philip as well, not delivering. You can poorly design your domain and still deliver and generate revenue. If you spend all your time designing the perfect domain and don't deliver, you failed. All models are wrong and some are useful, to quote George Box. 
And that's because oftentimes you're creating a model to solve a problem that maybe you don't fully understand yet. Maybe it's evolving, things are changing. You're gonna have aha moments. You're not gonna necessarily create it perfectly. Even then, even if you think you've created it perfectly, things are gonna change what needs to make it evolve. You're often making a lot of decisions based on the knowledge that you have. And there's some things that you don't know that you don't know. So you're making the best decisions you can given the knowledge you have. You're kind of making things with imperfect information. That's fine, move forward, deliver. And to continue with that thread, to elaborate on a little bit more, James added, not being humble about it. Thinking you can get mostly correct model. In a complex domain, you'll find useful models, but trade-offs and side effects always appear depending on the choice of your models. Can you anticipate all these? If you think you can, ouch. So what's my answer? What do I think is the worst mistake you can make when modeling a domain? Turns out, Boris gave my answer. Apart from not modeling collaboratively with domain experts, forgetting that a domain model is just another abstraction in the solution space that is supposed to be useful to address some slice of the problem space. You're not creating a representation of the real world. As Udi Dahan wrote, don't try to model the real world, it doesn't exist. Why? That sounds a little bit funny, but it's because of what I talked about earlier. Perspective. The real world to who? You got to take in the idea of somebody's context, their perspective within that context. What the model looks like in their context looks very different than in somebody else's context. They may be using the same words, they may be talking about the same thing, but they mean different things. That's why perspective and context is so important. So to summarize, I think some of the problems that you can run into when modeling are latching too much onto the technical and starting there first, rather than really trying to understand the context, the perspective, the use cases, fundamentally understanding what you're trying to solve. The technical will come, how you implement that, and realizing that there doesn't need to be one unified model to solve all problems. You're gonna have models that solve specific problems within a specific context. It doesn't need to be one model to rule them all. So what do you think is the biggest mistake you can make? Let me know in the comments. And if you wanna chat with other software developers about topics like this in software architecture and design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.